Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Please be seated. We will now begin session two, Why We Fear, and introduce our discussion panel. Firstly, we would like to invite Mr. Ili to the stage. Mr. Ili is an attorney at law at the Advocate for Public Interest Law, a non-governmental organization that advocates for human rights of refugees, stateless persons, and migrants. He is also serving as the chair of Korea Refugee Rights Network, as an attorney at law who specializes in labor and refugee law. He has worked hard to address the human rights issues that refugees and migrants face, and to promote domestic and international cooperation with other relevant organizations in the terms of refugee protection. Please welcome Mr. Illy to this stage with a warm round of applause. Yeah, this is uh, Tony Ili. Uh, as, as I as introduced, I think uh, I have been working for the human rights full time human rights lawyers for ten years in Korea, and I am serving as a chair of Korea Refugee Rights Network, consists of thirty three NGOs in Korea who advocate refugee rights. So I think I can share many experience uh, towards the refugees issues in Korea. Or I have many experience uh, kind of regarding fighting against the Korean government uh, for uh, ensuring refugees' rights. But in today, I think I have only around 15 or 20 minutes. So I will, rather than that, rather than explaining everything, I will try to focus on touch the issue, why we fear about the, why Korean to Korean nationals are a little bit worried to or sometimes they, are, they have hatred against the refugees. I will try to that issue and if you guys have uh, some kind of question regarding more general issues maybe you can ask it at the questions that Q a session later yeah so <laughs> the chair of Korea Network, I have visited many international international organizations or sometimes this is the photo when I visited the Geneva and when I there is also a global refugee forum at the 2019 after after, inept, after having, uh, what was the full name? It was um, Global Compact for Refugees. It is not, uh, there is a, some kind of another international norm made by, uh, signed by many countries at the time. So I participated as a uh, civil society's representative of Korea. So that this is the photo when I beat them. And then we have five lawyers in our office. Uh, full time, full time, by full time, public interest lawyers are in our office. So most of we are we do not we, we are another. Oh, uh, forget forget the other slides. I will try to explain in order. Okay. So I think. Uh, I will try to start with a brief of our case refugee protection system, but I think the next uh, next discussion, uh, Dr. Soyeon Park will cover these issues more, more generally, I guess, so I will try to touch it very briefly. We have, we, when we meet so many activists around the uh, Asian Pacific region, other activists, most of the activists are think that Korean system is a little bit good, better than their system, like in, in most most region of Asia. But as we, maybe I I guess that you guys have already heard about the United States system in the morning or in the session one, and was through the through the discussion or presentation or through the movie. Maybe you already saw seen it, but there are a little bit good system, good points in the Korean system. At least we have uh, the legislation of the Refugee Act, but most of countries doesn't have this kind of things in Asia region. So civil society's active intervention is very famous in Asia region, and close network between NGOs and lawyers and UNHCR is very good. But the problem is, as you know, that low negotiation rate is a very big problem. I think how do you know how many refugees are recognized in, in Korea? This is the statistics we 
we can we can we can show that maybe this blue line shows that how many asylum asylum application is lost in every year. It grows up, grows up in every year. But the red line means that how many refugees are recognized in every year. Maybe you can see that uh, there is a. It looks like there is a kind of cap in the in the recognition rate because the number is very similar around 100 people per in, in a year or 70 people in a year like that. So when you see that. The position recognition rate is rolling then we can see that. At the first time, in, in total, in Korea's refugee recognition rate is we can say that around 3.3 percent in after from the 2019-94 to this year, we can say that 3.3. But when you see that just 20 you know, 2019 or 2012, just 0.4 percent was refugees are recognized in refugees. It means that one day during the among thousand people who are losing the application refugee application in Korea, only poor, poor people can be recognized. It is very low, lower than we can say that it is very low than lower than other countries in uh, other countries. We can say that you know how many refugees are recognized in the United States. Maybe you can say that immigration policy is very harsh at the at the, the Trump administration, but. Even in the Trump administration, the refugee recognition rate is around 40%. It means that among 10 people, only four, four people can be recognized in refugee. In, in the United States, they say that the asylum is a little bit different. But, but in Korea, so what we call only four people among 1,000. So in Koreans, you can say the Korean people, Koreans' refugee system is very harsh. And you can say another thing. Have you seen this photo? Sometimes some refugee application, some refugee applicant. This is very famous. Famous photo is widespread towards France or Northern America, Northern Africa, in three weeks ago. It's a refugee applicant who was tortured in the Korean Deten immigration detention center because the reason is that he asking, he requesting his rights in some right in the detention center, but the rope you can see that the. the Rope uh, tied by the rope in the wrist. It is not permitted Korean national in this year, in this uh, uh, recently, after dictatorship is finished. It is kind of things not happen, but it is happening to the uh, refugee applicant in Korea. Sometimes I heard that many of uh, Korean newscasters say that is it the South Korea? I mean, I thought, I thought that is it the North Korea? Many people ask them like that, but it is happening in Korea. And even now, he is detained in detention. Because the reason, we can say, he, the foreigners, uh, refugees, are not treated as just like 100% human, because they are not 100% uh, human in detention. You know, children are detained for the refugee applicant. Sometimes because their, their parents are not Maybe we, we already seen that in the Trump, Trump, Trump administration, very harsh things we have seen it. But what, what, what I wanted to say that in, in the immigration detention facilities, children are also detained because they are not just Korean government. Korean government doesn't treat them as a human, 100% human. Sometime, do you see that in 2000, 2018, 500 Yemenis fled to Jeju Island. It is a very big issue in Korea at the time. And sometimes we, in the, in the, even the media, many people say, many people you easily say that the consent or agreement to the refugees or objection to, to refugees. But it is very weird the nominology, terminology. You, you know, have you heard about the, uh, are you agreed to disabled? Are you agreed to children? Are you agreed? This kind of things is very weird. But sometimes you know that in in the in the Korea, the toward agreement toward the refugees or objection toward the refugees is commonly used. It means uh, social so there are social places for refugees is not in Korean society. They are others outside outside of the Korean society. And many of you in the five or about four hundred Afghan Eastern refugees came to Korea because of some operation, military operation <coughs> made by the Korean government. They are 
they are in the some kind of social integration procedure in these days, but they are they didn't call the, as a refugees from the Korean government. Korean government rather than that, Korean government called them as a peoples with special merit. It is very weird naming because they are refugees because of the because of reason they helped Korean government at Afghanistan. Because of the only because of the reason they are persecuted by the Taliban. So the Korean government tried to protect them. But Korea, rather than that, Korean government was worried about the uh, anti-reaction, anti-reaction from the Korean civil society. They didn't want it to be uh, see the, that kind of hatred repeated at the 2018, like uh, 2018 when the Yemeni refugees came to Korea. So they didn't use the terminology, and then they used just name of people with special name. It's very weird because. <laughs> Uh, refugees, pro refugee protection is based on the non-discriminatory principle, but the Korean government using that, when they try to use the terminology, they discriminate people, some, some kind of very useful, useful people to Korea, and they not known useful people to Korea, they discriminate people like that. And then there are some more basic issues when you see that. There are lots of migrant workers in Korea. They are very uh, fundamental to Korea. Most of the food, most of the fishes, most of the things are every day in Korea, Korea people eat are from the migrant workers' labors. But the Korean government doesn't treat them as uh, just human. They are just a uh, labor. Because when they try to young, because sometimes only they can live in Korea for four years and ten months, and after that they should go back to a country. The reason is that if they can live in Korea more for than five years, they can ask them to permanent residency in Korea. So Korean government do not want to let them apply for permanent residency. So they just wanted to use their labor workers, the only labor work. And where is migrant? They are treated as just reproduction for the Korean people. It's very weird, but actually, you know, many marriage migrants, sometimes they can they say that to me, we are, our hobby is not marriage. <laughs> our identity is not related to marriage. We, only the way we came to Korea is just marriage. But do not say that we are just marriage, marriage migrant more, because they, we are not, we are not so, someone to marriage every, every day like that. So. <laughs> And the refugee, today's issue, for the Korean government side, refugees are just a tool for remain, maintaining their reputation. Korean government doesn't have a uh, sincere intention to protect the refugees in Korea, but the, when the Korean government the refugee, uh, economy grows uh, and then they have uh, some kind of, they need to, pre saving they need to protect, saving their places in the international society, so they, they, it is a refugee protection for Korean government. It's a kind of homework they do not really want to do. So I think I will try to touch very shortly about the basic, uh, basic reason why Korean nationals are afraid of, well, sometimes they, look, uh, they feel very strange to, towards refugees in Korea. The first, the first reason most to most Korean nationals, Korean peoples, refugees are the person peoples without faith. They do not know refugees at all. Sometimes when you think about the refugees, they are just mess. They are very mess. Mess means bad. Mess means uh, mess. This kind of photo uh, triggers a little bit fear or worry about something, security or everything. But the, what the fact is, they are. They are just people who have some, they are someone, refugees are also someone's uh, father, someone's uh, mother, someone's uh, brother, and they are very, they, some, they are just people like us, have uh, some, something, they have, uh, they have dreams, they have, they upload in Instagram every day, uh, photos every day, they watch YouTube, they, are, they watch Netflix every day, 
is they are just people like that. But because of the many, many problems, many issues are behind there, behind these issues, most of Koreans haven't met any. They haven't, they do not have any experience to meet the Korean uh, refugees in Korea. They are, from, they are from the Pakistan. Most of them are critical, granted refugees because of our help in Korea. They are from Yemen. They are, he is from Cameroon. He is from Somalia. You know, you know that it's very, very weird in Korea. Some Somalia, Somalia people, Somalia students are studying in Korea in the middle school or high school. You know, do you know how the friends call them when they first, first meet? Oh, you came from Somalia. Oh, you pirates. <laughs> this kind of things happen. He is from Rwanda. He's from Rwanda also. He's from Northern Sudan. You, have you heard about that? Sudan, there is another military coup happened three weeks ago. Lots of people saw they are shot by the military. And then this is, news is not widely spread because the uh, Sudan government cut off the internet. And he is from Egypt. Uh, he is a just a student who against who fight against the military coup, as coup, coup regime in Egypt. And he was detained in detention center, but he finalized recognized refugees. This kind of from the Jordan, Iran, Iran, Ethiopia. Liberia, Bangladesh, Syria. The training Syrians have been detained in Incheon Airport, International Airport for seven months. So I have helped them let them in Korea. From the Congo, maybe he's a little bit famous in famous in Korean TV, Jonathan. Uh, he is from Syria. Uh, Jordan, from Jordan and other families who have a radar, they interact with Korean society. From Libya. Yeah, this we, maybe we can. If we, the problem is there is no chance to meet the refugees in Korea because the number is very small. About just uh, three thousand uh, people are granted refugee status or human status status in Korea, so they, the number is very small. The visa understanding or basic imports are uh, second reason. Collect taxes on Koreans and spend all them on refugees is not never because the taxes refugees are paying taxes also and the budget for refugee policy is very very small in Korea. If refugees are accepted, crime rate will increase and the country will be in a mess. It's not because the foreigners' crime rate in itself is uh, below the half of the Korean nationals. Most of the refugees are fake refugees. No, Syrians and many many important uh, many high rated. High rated protect uh, needed uh, countries from them, from the countries the refugees are coming to Korea. First is refugees are just poor and uneducated people come to Germany. No, it's most, because most of them have a very professional background. They have sometimes they are they are professor, they were doctor, they are lawyer, they are just journalists. They have human rights activists. They are not just like uh, poor people like that. Other needs of refugees is very important in Korea. It is German. In German, some NGOs say like that. Refugees are the agents of the pre-existing social anxiety. It means that you know. Have you heard? Maybe you already saw many things in the Nazi in the in the, in the terms of Nazi in World War Second World War season. They are treated Jews as a social enemy because of that. The uh, German economy is very weak. They think like that. And the Koreans in Japan. Maybe right wing protesters say that because of the Korean in Japan, uh, Japan's economies are weak like that. Because you are, you are, they are, they are, they are Korean as a store. You are, yeah, these kind of things happen. In Trumpism in USA, US, United States, sometimes Trump say like that because of the migrants from the Latin America, they store our property and from you like that. This kind of thing happen. But you, the problem is, they are they are just they are just showing their anxiety. What is the social anxiety? If you, if you, Trump or other other people say like that, we can we can understand that economical status or economy or job. This kind of is very big social problem. We can we can understand that. But if we just even if we just deport, deport them, 
to even if deport are uh, making uh, some war to the refugees, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that economy will be good or everyone can get job. Everyone can be hired if we deport the war refugees. It doesn't mean, but it just show that what what kind of fear the society has. Deeply rooted uh, social nationalism in Korea also very important. Many uh, foreign national uh, students maybe they all they can uh, understand that Korea is so monotonous countries. Even not only for the race, they are very everything is very same. You know, have you maybe someone heard this kind of uh, sign? Nation Korean nation is first, but it is very right wing, far right wing. Uh, Sign, but it is commonly used without any controversial uh, because in Korea it, it, it is treated as very natural. It's very famous. Maybe I think that someone already seen it. Beginner guide to nationalism. In his, some capitalists say like that. Look at all this great stuff we have, and then some people like that. We don't have it. It's just you. We have it. So. The capitalists, uh, they draw the borderline, and then he repeats the same thing, same sentence. Look at all this great stuff we have. And then people cry, uh, shouted, yeah, I'm so proud, we are the best. It means the country border, and nationalism works. It's very simple example, but it, sometimes it happens in Korea. Sometimes, oh, BTS is very famous in, in the world. Oh, oh, I feel proud. Samsung is very good. <laughs> it sold many phones into the worldwide. Oh, I feel proud. But it doesn't mean that. Sometimes it it, it weaks the solidarity with uh, across the, with the other vulnerable peoples uh, behind across the border. So it is a problem of nationalism. But it is very important and very big problem for you. Yeah, I think. Because the time is already uh, already finished, I guess. But just very shortly, I will mention just two more things: misunderstanding of others or cultures. Uh, maybe, but I think uh, in this part, I will I need more than five minutes. So uh, most of them, most of them, could surely understand. There is a, some kind of uh, thought experiment. Uh, if we some Korean male. 500 Korean male, if they were to think about the possibilities, 500 Korean male went to the um, United States and losing refugee application in there. How the United States people react, will react? Uh, Korean are dangerous, Korean, are, Korean people's males are dangerous because they learned Taekwondo and they, are, they already finished the military conscription. They are kind of weapon, but these kind of things happen. But I think uh, it is not. Yeah, I do not have enough time to explain, explain this. And as I touched before, monotonous culture in Korea. In Korea, difference. It means that difference. Difference means a little bit wrong. <laughs> it is, <laughs> in, the, in the middle school, this kind of things happen. And when I the, in the middle school, this kind of slipper uh, is very famous. And everyone, everyone in our country, even our, our school, uh, wear the same. Same, same slipper, same. This, so I think I have some. Maybe you have faced a similar experience in Korea. Someone, if you, someone wanted to make a, a question in Korea, people, people think like that in the, in the this lecture room like that. Someone, some Korean people wanted to make a question, and then another students they can think that oh, do not, do not make a question. I know also. Just do not, just keep quiet. This kind of uh, culture or atmosphere is widespread in Korea. So do not, do not be shown as different. Just remain as a middle. That is the kind of very big norm in Korea. So it uh, also affects the Korean people's attitude towards refugees because they are totally different from. They sometimes they when they say the, their languages Arabic or their face or their race, it looks. Totally, you think that they are two different. So it means that not just different people, but they are wrong people. Korean people uh, think like that. Yeah, meritocracy in Korea also is very big problem. 
it degrades all people's human rights in Korea. This is a very big problem, not just for the refugee issues. Some people, some Koreans say things like that. Male, male persons who already finished the military conscription should deserve more than women. Sometimes think like that. Sometimes some people think like that. University, very good, high populated university, uh, finished, that sh they should be deserved more. This kind of things is very deeply rooted in Korea. And maybe, not only in Korea, meritocracy class problem is very widespread in everywhere. But the problem, meritocracy uh, triggers, not just meritocracy, but just giving the prize to the winners, but it gives another effect, it, it triggers hatred towards vulnerable peoples. Okay, so women, they do not deserve anything. <laughs> women, women like this. Women who didn't come, uh, finish the military conscription, they, just, they do not have a right in Korea. It's very weird, but it is something sometimes it's, it, people think like that. Foreigners, they do not have a nationality. They do not have any, they do not deserve anything in Korea. Because they, and there's some students who didn't, didn't finish the very good, famous university, they do not deserve to anything in Korea. It's, it degrades our dignity also, because just it has a human, not without some kind of some kind of money or some kind of social status, some kind of military status, some kind of sex, everything. It beyond this, just just we, Korean society lose the active, lose the way to how to how to address the just human is uh, worthy and the just human right is very important. We cannot say that because of national, because of sex, because of military conscription, because of the money. Because of that, they should be treated well. This kind of thing is very important. So even for the foreigners, especially refugees, or some undocumented people in Korea, they are treated, they don't have any way to be respected as a human national. I, I think I have already spent many times, so I think, and then these, these things is not my main thing. Uh, when I usually uh, give a speech in, a general general lecture about towards the refugees. So maybe after Q and A session, if we have any question regarding uh, Han Korean's refugee system or many surroundings, you can raise that on your hand and please feel free to question. Me. Yeah, thank you. The Pursuit Park has been uh, has been exposed to a. Uh, close contact COVID case this morning, so she's unable to join us in person. However, she has kindly decided that she will join us through Zoom, uh, including for the Q&A session later. Um, instead of participating in the Q&A session uh, with uh, Mr. Lee, she will just answer some questions after her presentation. But some background on who she is first. She has been studying migration and refugee issues, working directly in migrant and refugee social integration programs in the southern region of the United States. She has worked at the Refugee Library of the Republic of Korea Ministry of Justice. Additionally, Dr. Park is currently a visiting scholar at the Migration Research and Training Center and a full-time researcher at Iwas Women University, Asian Center for Women's Studies. The stage is now yours. Hi, everyone. It's very nice to be here and meeting everyone in the Asian community. And I'm sorry about these abrupt changes. And um, even with that, you know, this technical uh, team or uh, the host team kindly arranged everything for me to present here. So I'm very honored um, to be here to discuss, uh, to discuss one of the current and you know, important matters in the Korean society and beyond. And uh, for the disclaimer, actually, um, at home, my internet uh, connection is not very stable and I live with two cats. So they might interrupt, you know, some of my presentation. So you know, just um, I'll be upfront about it. All right. So my name is Soyeon Park, and I worked as a refugee officer at the Ministry of Justice in South Korea, and particularly in the Refugee Appeal Division. And currently, I am a visiting scholar at IOM MRTC uh, and a full-time researcher at Asian Center for Women's Studies at Yuha Women's University. And I'm doing uh, some academic research on refugee institution and political humanitarian. So um, I think uh, 
Mr. Lee uh, already introduced, you know, some of our like social atmosphere and discourses uh, surrounding refugee issues. So I'm going to uh, focus on, you know, the procedures that refugee uh, each uh, refugee applicant needs needs to go through, and you know, what I experienced in the ministry and so on. Um, so, you know, I was working in, in the refugee appeal division, um, and for those who are unfamiliar with the procedure, uh, I'm going to show you some of the, some of the procedures that are taking place in South Korea. I'm going to share the screen here. Is it clear that we All right, I guess we'll proceed. Um, so, um, firstly, with the definition of refugee, you know, when we just hear about, you know, who the person is, you know, like defined as a refugee, uh, it is generally understood as a person who fled war, violence, conflict, or other, you know, mishaps, like have post an international border to find safety in another country. Um, but the legal definition is a little bit narrow. So uh, we are following a UN convention, uh, which is established in 1951, and also a protocol following, uh, followed by the convention. And uh, according to the definition of convention, you can see uh, down there, it is the monthly is unable to who are unwilling to return to their country of origin owing to a well-founded fear of being persecuted for um, for reasons of race, religion, nationality, and membership of a particular social group or a political opinion. So with this uh, definition, uh, I'm going to skip uh, some of the global trends because I guess we won't have enough time. Um, but yeah, I'll go. Uh, I'll go uh, directly to the international refugee review. So for um, determining uh, a refugee status at the ministry, we are uh, referring and and studying these conventions to uh, determine the status. So uh, the grounds are in the 1951 Refugee Convention and 1967 Protocol and some regional refugee laws. And uh, other you know, international agreements can be the grounds for, um, for the uh, yeah, refugee determination. And it also constitutes the refugee regime. And since refugees are also um, migration flow, let me hold here for a moment because my cats are disturbing so, so bad. So I'm going to put her in other um, area and then look at that. I'm so sorry about the interruption. <laughs> She's acting up since I'm speaking. Um, all right, so the international refugee regime is uh, constituted of you know, different kinds of uh, protocols and agreements, including um, some agreements on immigrants because you know, refugee flow is part of the migration flow. So um, these you know, institutions such as IOM and ILO you know, or some other human rights instruments such as OHCHR you know, are the kind of uh, the basis for the international refugee regime. So how about like Korean refugee regime? What is the institutional development along the way? So in uh, 1993, uh, Korean government succeeded to the UN Refugee Convention. And in 2013, uh, Refugee Act is established. 
So it kind of provided um, a grounds, legal grounds for protecting uh, refugees for the first time. And um, in 2015, uh, it also established a refugee division and also general offices that are in charge of determining uh, refugee status. And in 2020, uh, Refugee Policy Division and um, right, it is saying that my internet is a little unstable. Um, all right. Okay. Um, I hope you guys are hearing it just fine. Um, and in 2020, uh, yeah, the Refugee Policy Division is established uh, along with Refugee Appeal Division. And this division is where I work. In 2018, um, Yemeni incident, uh, it was so called the Yemeni incident happened. And you know, there was kind of issues about proper refugee interviews. So they became the kind of grounds you know, for incorporating civil forces into the government um, you know, established because a refugee area is quite specialized and it needs you know, a lot of professional knowledge. Uh, including interpretation and also legal, you know, legal uh, interpretations and also, um, you know, some of the regional uh, languages that are uh, quite specific and very delicate uh, also need to be um, implemented when uh, we are determining the status. So uh, the government was recognizing the need to recruit you know, these uh, forces like from the civil society so they started to uh, recruit uh, people uh, from the field uh, of, you know, like this kind of regional studies um, or, you know, anthropology or uh, study of law, you know, like different fields, uh, specialists are recruited into this division. So I was one of them. And um, yeah, in the end, like I uh, kind of terminated the contract after two years, but it was a very valuable experience uh, for me to be on this side. And um, there was another kind of institutional development, such as certification of specialized interpreters as well. So if you look at, um, all right, if you look at uh, some of the um, numbers here, the number of applications uh, in the world, uh, you can see, you know, France accepted more than 60,000 people in 2015, where, you know, Korea accepted only, or accepted the application only um, maybe less than 5,000. And in 2018 and 19, um, Korea also has seen a huge increase, you know, compared to the past which was uh, about 16,000 and 15,000 each year. And of course, you know, after 2020, uh, because of the COVID-19, there is a decrease in application numbers. But we are expecting this number will you know, like, uh, increase after the uh, COVID-19. So you know, the government is also busy with uh, being equipped with uh, necessary resources to screen and you know, process all these uh, refugee claims. But in comparison, you know, uh, to come back to the subject here, um, you can see uh, Canada or France have accepted you know, larger numbers of applications uh, from, from the world. And Korea is still uh, kind of uh, consisting a small portion of this uh, you know, application, but still, it is. I'm thinking that this is uh, still, uh, you know, like making an important point for Korean government to take this refugee matter seriously. And uh, I will show you some of the statistics here: um, the refugee applications and status holders numbers. Um, so if you see these uh, tables here, uh, you can see you know the most applications are made by these people who are you know from Central Asia like Russia or China. 
So, you know, since uh, Korea is located in East Asia, right? So geographically, this is kind of a reasonable uh, result. So Kazakhstanis uh, are making, you know, like a big portion of application. And Chinese, you know, traditionally it has been a big portion of that. And recently, Russia became a big part of the situation. And uh, if you see the recognized refugees, you know, who are uh, granted the refugee status, are different from these applications in you know, a country of origin. So uh, the top country is Myanmar, and the next is Ethiopia and Bangladesh. And those countries have had, you know, some historical issues uh, in terms of humanitarian issues. So if you see uh, the refugee status determination process procedure, um, you, you can apply for refugee status um, at regional offices. And you have to go through some interviews uh, that are going to kind of evaluate if you are eligible for refugee status. And then after the deliberation, the refugee status is uh, decided. And if you get um, first refusal of the status, then you're going to uh, appeal to the Minister of Justice. So the uh, division of uh, uh, the refugee appeal division is in charge of this appeal cases. And even after these um, appeal cases, uh, if they don't get the status, they can also appeal to the court. So it is going to be under the judiciary. So some of the challenges, um, yeah, I'll have to move, you know, a little bit closer. So the refugee area is kind of um, in the middle of all these three factors. Uh, there could be more, but, you know, these are kind of the major uh, three sectors that need to be considered. So there is one sector um, about international laws and agreements, you know, that South Korea uh, has agreed to do, you know, sort of something or, you know, agreed to kind of uh, share the burden. So there is this kind of agreement kind of area, you know, you would consider uh, of when, uh, when it comes to refugee determination. And there is also an issue of natural sovereign rights. So it's about, you know, like the country's, uh, the nation state's right to accept or, you know, not to accept certain kinds of people. So there is some kind of like screening and kind of investigation process. And also, you know, who to protect and who are not uh, worthy of protection. And what is constituting a, a crime or, you know, what is constituting a you know, not really permissible act, you know, like in Korean society. So that is also a part of the national sovereign rights realm. And the other uh, sector we need to consider is uh, refugee individual rights, of course. And I think this part was um, very well explained by uh, Mr. Lee. And uh, it's also uh, the part that you know we need to all kind of think about, and also you know also where social agreements need to be um, mobilized for uh, better protecting individuals' rights. So because of these, um, you know, different uh, areas, concerns, we have these challenges. So firstly, you know, when I did uh, this, uh, uh, you know, refugee work as a refugee officer, I've seen many people who applied for the status uh, don't really have uh, knowledge, proper knowledge to um, apply for the status itself because it's quite a specialized area. You know, you need, uh, you need to know the legal process you know, and also the, you know, definition of refugee and, you know, how to process, you know, this whole kind of, uh, you know, up to maybe two or three years kind of process. So, you know, not many people uh, probably have thought about themselves applying for this kind of so, you know, it is, it could be natural you know, to, to see that people don't have, you know, necessary information. So this is where, um, you know, government officials help can be made and also, you know, like uh, civil forces can also help uh, to, uh, 
you know, how for the refugees to go through this process. Um, RDS sometimes seem very difficult um, procedures. And also, uh, as I told you before, um, we have seen a sudden increase in refugee application um, due to many factors. You know, in 2018 and 19, we have almost like 15,000 and 16,000 um, applications, and there are not enough, you know, staff members to really, um, you know, do all the RSD process, which is which means refugee status determination, I believe. Um, and you know, like the increase of refugee application can be explained in many ways. Uh, some people explain it uh, because. It's, it is because of the weaker, you know, immigration system, um, where we cannot really, you know, hold people in certain criteria, um, certain, you know, adequate criteria for everyone. So there is inadequate kind of visa system that kind of sparks um, refugee application spike. Um, and you know, like there are not many available visa status for these foreign populations to um, to gain. So you know, they in the end just um, you know like um, compromise to apply to apply for the refugee status, even though they recognize it is not you know like applied to them. And um, I guess the you know like increased kind of status um, like developed as a developed country, um, Korea is like this. So I think that higher status uh, internationally also contribute to these factors and um, increase of, um, you know, influx of foreign population in general. And um, I just addressed about this point. So we still lack uh, resources that are needed you know, to uh, properly um, process the refugee status determination, and there is uh, this push for reduction of you know processing time, uh, while system systematic support a really bad. So that means uh, in the government, uh, you know the legal training is also needed uh, for processing the RSP procedure. And also POI research, which means country of origin. So you need some specialized re regional knowledge uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to evaluate each case because you are dealing with, you know, these people from 100, you know, something countries, and you need to know and you need to have, you know, certain people who have special knowledge on this field. And also, you know, uh, Korea as a um, country, which is not, you know, conventionally immigrant-centered country, we don't really have many, um, you know, diverse uh, language speakers, uh, and that is also a kind of problem that um, you know, refugee officers face. I mean, we can't really grant, uh, guarantee a quality interpreters for uh, this very special knowledge that we uh, and the other uh, side of this problem can be explained in uh, several ways, and one of them is, uh, you know, a narrow definition of refugee. And as I introduced in the beginning, uh, we are still following, you know, 1951 Convention and 1957 Protocol, and you know, according to that uh, convention, you know, refugee is determined uh, on the grounds of, you know, five of persecution. Uh, reasons which are listed in the in the guidelines the UN and the CR <coughs> and the convention. And it doesn't include uh, you know of people affected by the civil wars. So if we are thinking about you know Syrians or Yemenis, you know, why are not why are they not you know, recognized as refugees? Um, but you know because of this kind of legal definition uh, the government cannot grant the death penalty to them. Instead, uh, Yemenis and Syrians who are affected by civil wars um, are um, are recognized as uh, humanitarian stakeholders. So, you know, people who have humanitarian reasons to stay abroad. So, um, there is that, 
uh, the narrow definition uh, of being a refugee. And also, as I showed you before, uh, the major countries of origin are not necessarily those countries who are entirely affected by you know, the conflict or um, kind of high degree of violence. And it's also um, part of the reason why the you know, like acceptance rate is quite low. And uh, the other important reason is our rigid and underdeveloped immigration system. So, you know, those people who um, kind of exhausted the means uh, to stay in Korea um, just finally end up in uh, kind of like a system. So that could be another problem. And um, there are many criticisms about you know, these humanitarian status holders uh, situations because there is less uh, support for these people and they have to renew their uh, status every year in order to secure them. Like all those people who cannot really come back to their countries. Um, so there is that criticism, and I think government needs to come up with uh, necessary uh, measures you know, to really change the situation. And there is another uh, component that was described very well by Mr. Lee. Uh, it's about the societal uh, agreement. You know, on integration of all those in general. So, you know, is Korea society really um, ready for accepting differences you know, other than like us? Right? So, um, to really increase the social awareness of, um, you know, of foreigners themselves and, and also, you know, of many kinds of other social others, like social minorities. Uh, need to be also talked about very widely, and I think uh, we need to also, you know, we, kind of our researcher or um, government workers, and also, you know, NGO workers and so forth who are uh, involved in this area, need to work harder, you know, to re really, um, you know, raise the awareness in the society um, and also, uh, you know, more active um, discussion. So uh, these are the challenges that I thought of, and if you do have any questions about like, the work that I've done uh, or um, any kind of issues relating to the refugees and immigrants, then uh, we can discuss this in the discussion room. And this is all I Thank you, Dr. Park, for your informative and comprehensive pres comprehensive presentation. Um, we have time for one quick, very quick question. It's Dr. Park, if anybody in the audience has something they want to ask. Hello, my name is Leah Tudor. I'm a global affairs major. And I was just curious what you think the factors are that lead refugees to decide to select a certain host country to resettle in. Specifically, why have there been so many people that have decided that Korea is the ideal place to apply for refugee status. Can I just answer it directly? Go ahead. All right. Um, well, it is just my personal opinion, but uh, also I think, uh, you know, like people can agree on this point. Uh, Korea, you know, has become kind of a popular destination to a lot of people in the world. You know, like through maybe K-pop and you know other kind of cultural uh, representations, and on top of that, you know, like Korea has become really um, you know big major economic uh, entity, and a lot of people you know want to kind of find better working conditions and you know payment, um, you know basically uh, in the world if they have resources to migrate. So I think um, that is one of the main reasons why uh, there is an increase in refugee application as well. And I've also heard from these uh, applicants themselves that um, you know, Korea seems to be very safe and, and you know, like well-off country you know, to raise their kids. So I guess, you know, like the kind of images of Korea, you know, being uh, safe and clean, you know, uh, generally, good country to live in uh, can be a factor for these people who need uh, protection. Um, 
also you know appeal to those people. Thank you very much for your presentation and for the uh, and for your informative answer to the question that the audience had asked you. Um, we appreciate your time here and we appreciate that you joined us through Zoom for today's session. We're fortunate that you couldn't. We're, uh, it's unfortunate that you couldn't make it here in person. But thank you very much. From here, we would now like to move on to the uh, Q&A discussion with Mr. Illy and uh, Dr. Ji Hei Lim. Hello, my name is Ji Hei Lim, uh, Acting Director of CSKSK and Assistant Professor of Global Affairs. And now we come to the question and answer session. Unfortunately, we couldn't um, have Dr. Park, but we have Ms. Lee here. So if you have question, please feel free to ask your question. Can I have some questions from the audience? Yes, in the third floor. Oh, hello, my name is Kayan Park um, from Stony Group. Um, Currently majoring in uh, technology, uh, Department of Technology and Society. Um, I have actually two questions. Uh, one is for uh, Mr. Lee, and the other one was supposed to go to Dr. Park. But I think Mr. Lee and Dr. Um, Lim also can answer my questions. Um, the first question is that. Uh, uh, Dr. Lee, uh, sorry, Mr. Lee, uh, you mentioned and explained about the misunderstanding that we have toward refugees. But, um, but as far as I understand, uh, there could be misunderstandings and uh, refugees, they could be, uh, they are good people. But the thing is, we all know that we can, uh, human beings cannot be all good. We know that there are some people, good people, and there are bad people. I kind of have a thought that whether it is a good to have a strategy that the framing that refugees are actually they are good people, have good heart, or have a good background with higher education. Do you think it is a good strategy? Because at the end, it's not about whether we have right information about them. Uh, I guess the very important thing is whether we can trust them. And I don't think that trust can be coming from the uh, of course, it could be coming from right information, but I kind of doubt that uh, trust cannot be built only through having right information. What do you think? What kind of strategy? I don't want to put it as a strategy, but what do you think about um, whether just framing them as a good people have good background? And uh, the other question is, can I continue it or just, uh, okay. The second question is, uh, as far as I understand, uh, refugee, department of refugee, I'm not, I'm not sure whether I have known the uh, uh, official term of the uh, in uh, Ministry of Justice. Uh, uh, refugee, department of refugee is under the uh, Ministry of Justice, uh, Ministry of Justice of Korea, right? And I like to know that, what does it mean? Um, uh, what is its implication to have refugee de department at the uh, Ministry of Justice, not about the uh, Ministry of Health and Welfare? I'd like to know whether the government perceives them as kind of we should filter them out <laughs> before they enter the, the country. So I'd like to know the implication, the, the positioning of the uh, Department of uh, Refugee and the Ministry of Justice. Thank you. Okay, thank you for very great questions. I think uh, before uh, before jumping to the question, I think I can adding some uh, her question. So she, she mentioned uh, the Dr. Park was mentioned about that. The most important thing is about how to, the refugees can choose the country, the destination. The uh, the important thing we should think about is most of refugees doesn't have the freedom to choose the country. Even someone wanted to go even to the Korea. They didn't do it, do not choose the Korea that, oh, there are lots of countries I can play, play. But so Korea, oh, it looks a little bit better, so I will choose that. It's not happening like that. 
sometimes in Korea, only the visa, visa system are open to very specific countries, or sometimes the visa free system, or very sometimes they pay, I cannot explain everything, but the problem is most of countries uh, build some kind of barrier to refugees. As you will see that in the Europe, they, because of the immigration, immigration barrier system, most of people refugees doesn't have a choice to where to go to the Europe, Europe in countries, so they just choose to take a boat uh, to the to the southern Europe like that. Even most of most of refugees doesn't have freedom to choose freely to Korea, but sometimes very very narrow the door is open and some some to some country like uh, Korea or some other country, and then they can just okay, I just come to Korea. You know, in five years ago, ten years ago, some more refugees even they doesn't know where is the Korea, and they, even they didn't choose that, but they just took a flight into the Korea. Sometimes in, when in someone in Congo DRC from the Congo DRC Congo, someone fled Korea and then they took a they uh, landed to the Incheon. That they he he saw that or oh, is it North Korea because he haven't heard of the South Korea before in the Africa. This, this kind of thing happened. But as the, the Dr. Bob mentioned, many things many things changed and many people knows that Korea is a kind of country or Samsung or sometimes or some kind of UN Secretary General people, was a Korean people, people knows that. So people think that uh, Korea is a little bit safer country like that. And another thing is, uh, Incheon is very important to uh, trans the area in this uh, East Asia region. So some of us, especially Syrian refugees uh, just directly, who cannot get a visa, they just transit in the Incheon airport, they wanted to lose an electrical application in the Incheon airport. That is a, a second, second area. The third thing is, there are actually, there are not lots of countries who can make actual refugee application uh, in East Asia region. Only Hong Kong, only Japan, and Korea, and in the Asia region, we can think like, we can add in the Philippines into the country, but most of the country doesn't have a refugee system in this area. And as you know that Ch China doesn't protect refugees, most they just repatriate the North Korea too. And they do not have a losing refugee application system. They signed the secret refugee convention, but they do not have a actual applicable losing application procedure in there. And then Japan's uh, refugee recognition is much more low than in Korea. So actually, there are not much more uh, selective uh, selections in East Asia region if you wanted to someone. Some, sometimes, someone wanted to go to the North America. Someone wanted to go to New Zealand. Someone wanted to go to Europe. But they, someone, they do not have a way to go there. They choose to East Asia, and then they should go to uh, Korea. That is uh, some kind of background. And the very good, great question uh, for you that is, yeah, I do not, I think that sharing, sharing correct information, that is important. And then there is a two strategy for framing refugees. Some framing, uh, but I didn't choose to, first strategy means that uh, refugees are a very good person. They are kind or they are very nice. I didn't like that. But what I want to mention in that is, Someone, people, some people just have uh, some kind of conception that all refugees are fake, all refugees are dangerous, all refugees are very poor. I just wanted to challenge the mindset of that, but I do not want to use that all refugees are kind. As we know, all, all of us are not a very good person. Some of us are, <laughs> we can turn into the uh, better persons can do. So there are some good persons in refugees, while some better persons can be in the refugees. The problem is, the, but the main important thing is, the reason the refugees should be protected is not related with whether they are very good or bad. The reason they should be protected is they are very vulnerable from the persecution of their countries. That is the important person. So that's the reason I wanted to raise the question about the Afghanistan, Afghanistan people who the Korean government named that as a people with special merit is very weird. Because Korean government just wanted to give uh, some prize to the Afghanistan people, but it is very weird because Korea's government is the government who should be responsible for their uh, persecution, fear of persecution in Afghanistan. Korean government is another, uh, another entity who will give the prize to, uh, prize to their kind of merit. So that kind of uh, approach is very dangerous, I think. I think I can agree, but I, I just wanted to challenge up uh, a bad conception of general people's mind. And the second question you mentioned about the why Ministry of Justice, it, yeah, it's very good question. Because refugee, say, so it means that 
Korean, actually, the Korean refugee system is copied from the Japanese refugee system at the 1994 before that. So it, they just copied everything from the Japan. And the concept of the refugee system in Ministry of Justice means that it is uh, below, under the immigration control. The refugee, con refugee protection is sometimes it is contradictory to the immigration control. Because when I, 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 I lose it several lots of strategic litigation in Korea, I win, I won many cases in the airport, detention, I, I changed the main things. But sometimes immigration officers, who, most of immigration officers are very, uh, they didn't understand what is the refugee kind of thing. Sometimes at the airport, they, when you someone wants to show, show the fake, fake passport, okay, I'll go back. That is their job. But sometimes a refugee convention is, is inactive. They think the FHO is inactive. Oh, refugee? Okay, how can I do? Repatriate it or just, can, just let it? They do not understand because sometimes this kind of contradictory uh, things happens in immigration control. So the important thing is many things are, these questions are being made even in the government. Sometimes we are saying that uh, some, in some countries, uh, just uh, refugee policy is uh, dealt within the Minister of, Minister of Interior or just outside of Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice is very friendly to um, punishing or say, make them or some build barrier. So it, it doesn't uh, relate with uh, how to protect the refugees. So that, that kind of uh, your uh, question is a very good question. but but. Uh, the problem is many Korean people doesn't have an interest on the refugee issues at all. So someone knows that, even in the government, or even the parliament members knew that there is a kind of structural problem in there, but they do not have an inter interest or power to move on to some, uh, some structural changes. You know that the Dr. Park has worked for the uh, appeals division uh, for two years, so even though, though this appeal division's area was very small, number was very small, it's really hard to uh, recruit just one more people and get 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 one more fundraising from the minister. Of, I don't know, do in, do exactly know the English name, but in the inside, the I, I think that I, I can share that more than Korean general people's. So more than Korean people's general thought, government side, the government officials are attitude toward refugees very conservative. They do not want to make up uh, just more officers. They do not want to allocate a little more hundreds uh, budget. So it is very uh, problematic matters. But I think you you put it out very correctly. Yeah. yeah, I have nothing to add. <laughs> I think this is a very good um, answer and. Thank you for the questions. Uh, can I have another question from the audience? Well, hello, this is Byung Chul Kim from the major. Uh, based on your experience in litigation for supporting refugees, what do you believe is the most common and pervasive issue that refugees face? Okay, so uh, I think this very broad question is I mean, on one hour, I guess, but I think, um, uh, yeah, we should challenge the, the low recognition. I think there are, we can say that there are two big problems on refugees uh, when we try to help the, uh, advocate refugees rights in Korea. The first thing is getting them to let them get the refugee status. It is really hard. It is really hard. There are lots of, lots of um, reasons behind this, uh, behind this, because of lack of information, most of officers, even judges, doesn't know where about. It's, it's common in East Asia. It's, I met many uh, judges in Hong Kong, or this guy I met many immigration officer, officials in Japan, because when I'm working with uh, other countries activists, this is very common. They do not understand what they, even they didn't have a uh, 
opportunity to the learn what is the refugee convention or well, like it, it is very big issues who is a refugee is that there are very big uh, you know, yeah so that is that is the important things I wish the challenge about uh, let them get get their status because zero point four percent means that doesn't it doesn't means that nineteen 19.6% is not refugees. It doesn't mean that. Because it, it means Korean system, refugee system, is failed to protect most of refugees. There are lots of refugees who didn't get refugee status because of not they are not refugees. Because of that, Korean government just failed to protect them, failed to, failed to conceive them as a refugee. That is a very big problem. So in this gap, we are trying to struggle to fight with the Ministry of Justice, even the Division of the Appeal, or sometimes we fight the laws, we defend the refugees in the Seoul Administrative Court and the other court, Yemenis or Syrians or Afghanistan. That these kind of things happen. And the second thing is when we, sh when we should uh, use, uh, we should challenge is uh, integration of refugees. So just getting refugee status means doesn't mean that they can uh, live peacefully in Korea. If just getting refugee status means that they will not expect they will not expect expect expired repatriated. They cannot be repatriated. It doesn't mean their job. It doesn't mean their language. It doesn't mean their inter how to be integrated. What the problem is for 20 years, Korean civil society only have been focused on the how to get the refugees get the status because this is a main problem. But you know that sometimes most of the refugees or humanitarian status holders receive the, some status and they can get a state, they can live in Korea. But most of them are living very poor condition because of they cannot speak Korean. Even someone humanitarian status holders problem is very big. Syrians and Yemenis, Korean governments block everything in their lives. They cannot, they cannot get be hired be very good jobs. Only the job is allocated, uh, is permitted to them is just manual labor in the factory. Every year, from, from till they, they died in Korea. And they, to the humanitarian stakeholders, they cannot be issued a travel document. So they cannot, if their Syrian passport is expired, they cannot go out anywhere. Korean Peninsula is kind of a jail to them. They cannot go out anywhere. And then, you know, humanitarian stakeholders, they cannot bring their children or their, case, they, they, their spouse. Most of Syrian or Yemenis are people who are humanitarian stakeholders. Are they are families are living in, living in Jordan or Turkey or some, some areas, but the Korean government, they didn't allow to, be, to bring them because they do not want to, refugees number is growing. But how can we say that this is a humanitarian? They cannot go out, they cannot, they cannot meet the, uh, their spouse and children, they cannot work in their very uh, good job, uh, job places. So this kind of, and then Korean government do anything, doesn't do anything for the, how can be they can be integrated to Korean society? How can be they connected with the local areas? How they can connect with just Korean people? This kind of is a very big problem. Even the United States or on other countries has a long experience that housing, language, traumatic problem, medical care, education, this kind of war and things and NGOs developed very well, but there is nothing in Korea about this. So most of refugees, you have to very, I'm sorry that I talk too much, but the problem is, very saddest thing is, getting refugee status in Korea is really, really hard. But you know, even after being refugee, getting a refugee status, the life hasn't changed anything. So some of them, they wanted to go out something. I, I have this kind of, they, they can assess, oh, can we have any uh, way to relocate to another, resettle to the another countries? Or someone, as you, as you my foreigners can be facing that. Most of, Korean, most of foreigners in Korea facing some kind of racism in Korea every day like that. So they do not feel any safe in Korea even after getting their prestige status. So uh, I, I think I went too long, but this kind of getting their prestige status, or how can we uh, get integrated into Korean society? There is a very big problem. So sometimes we try to challenge something, but there are lots of other specific areas, detention or airport or some kind of living in their last of but it is like
like two specialized legal ways, legal areas, I think it is sufficient. Uh, due to the time concern, I think I, I have to wrap up this session here. But after this event, we're going to have a short casual meeting at CSPSK in George Mason University. So if you have any more questions, uh, Mr. Lee, please come over CSPS and ask a question. And also, I know that Appeal, where he works for, has a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. So please subs subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> Appeal. And if you have any questions, that will be the good place to ask your question. Thank you, Ms. Lee, thank for you. today's session, and thank you, everyone. Um, I am very honored by this location to extend my gratitude to our distinguished speakers today. And also, I would like to give special thanks to CSPS student fellows who initiated, planned, organized, and successfully completed this seminar. I want to look beyond this series and consider the possibilities for turning our unfounded fear into hope today. If there is a shared belief of all the members of communities in promoting basic human dignity and truth that is derived from the reality that is the head start toward a better world. I believe that today's seminar shows you one possibility to achieve this end. Our next generation is starting to actively learn about what is happening in the world and share what they learn here. They are developing their own mechanism for cooperation that can bring about benefits. Not only organizing, but also participating in a seminar or a conference on one or more specific topics is one form of cooperation. In this regard, your participation and attendance have been extremely valuable. Another possibility can be found in identifying experts or institutions that will continue to work together on problems. In a further front, Mason Korea should be able to act as an effective platform to build the relationship. I am positive that we shall become stronger through exchanges and collective learning opportunities. In line with our mission to build innovative and inclusive academic community, our key task will be to bring more talents closer together at a frontier of where South Korean society goes next. This seminar has taken the first step. I express my gratitude to all participants again and look forward to the second. Thank you, everyone.